Good morning and welcome to the Sermonic blog for May the 1st, 2022. My name is Jeffrey Ozick. I'm delivering this live and in person at 255 Portland Street in Dartmouth. And today we ask the question, so Jesus rose from the dead. What now? A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 21st chapter. After this, Jesus appeared again to the disciples, this time at the Tiberias Sea, or the Sea of Galilee. This is how he did it. Simon Peter, Thomas, nicknamed a twin, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the brother Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. Simon Peter announced, I'm going fishing. And the rest of them replied, we're going with you. And they went out and got in the boat, and they caught nothing that night. When the sun arose, Jesus was standing on the beach, but they didn't recognize him. Jesus spoke to them, Good morning. Did you catch anything for breakfast? They answered, No. He said, Well, throw the net off to the right side of the boat and see what happens. They did what he said, and all of a sudden there were so many fish in it, they weren't strong enough to pull it in. Then the disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the master. When Simon Peter realized it was the master, he threw on some clothes, for he was stripped for work, and dove into the sea. The other disciples came in by boat, for they weren't far from land, a hundred yards or so, pulling along the net full of fish. And when they got out of the boat, they saw a fire laid with fish and bread cooking on it. Jesus said, bring some of the fish you just caught. Simon Peter joined them and pulled the net to shore. 153 big fish. And even with all those fish, the net didn't rip. Jesus said, breakfast is ready. Not one of the disciples dared ask, who are you? Because they knew it was the master. Then Jesus took the bread and he gave it to them. And he did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus had shown himself alive to the disciples since being raised from the dead. After breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, master, you know I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Then he asked the second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, master, you know that I love you. Jesus said, shepherd my sheep. Then he said it a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Well, Peter was upset that he was asked for the third time, do you love me? So he answered, master, you know everything there is to know. You've got to know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I'm telling you the very truth now, that when you were young, you dressed yourself and went wherever you wished. But when you get old, you'll have to stretch out your hands while someone else dresses you and takes you where you don't want to go. He said this to hint at the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. And then he commanded, follow me. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Question, so what starts with an O and ends with N-I-O-N-S and makes weaklings cry? Well, the answer, of course, is opinions. Opinions are the big divider. Some people get vaxxed and some people don't. Basis is opinions. We had a protest in downtown Kentville last Saturday. I happened to be passing through on the way to the bicycle repair shop, so I was mildly interested in what they were protesting about. It was an anti-mask protest. I was quite confused. I felt like going up to them and asking, so what is the protest? Those who want vaccinations got them, and those who didn't, didn't. And the mask restriction was lifted last month. Now it's a recommendation, not a requirement. Am I missing something? If they're protesting to make change, I have news. 
the changes are already over. I chose not to engage in conversation. The time to take sides on this issue is over. Ever wonder what criteria God uses when call he's calling someone? I mean, how are the sides chosen? Well, I could tell you as a non-athlete in school, I didn't want teams to pick me. I usually took up my place at third base. That's Nobody ever hits the ball out there, and so I was quite safe. And when people wanted me to have the ball, they usually rolled it to me. In our reading of Acts, we see Saul changing sides. He was anti-Christian and then became a Christian. Jesus, why would you pick him? I'm sure Saul, whose name was changed to Paul, asked himself the same question, as did Ananias. The same dynamic happens with Simon in the Gospel. Simon, whose Christian name is Peter, was out of directions. He followed Jesus because he loved him, and Jesus was physically right there. Well, now that Jesus makes appearances, the directions are short. Go to this place. Go to that place. In today's story, Peter returns to what he does best, fishing. We've come full circle. If you remember earlier, this is where he met Jesus the first time. If you remember that story, it unfolded much the same way. Fishing all night, nothing happening. Stranger comes and asks if they caught something. And they tells them to drop the nets in the sea. Same thing happens. The fish are in school. More than enough. Wow. They all know who it is. After breakfast, Jesus asked Peter the famous question. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Some suggest the three questions coincide with Peter's denial of loving Jesus. I suppose Jesus felt hurt when he saw his most loyal support deny ever knowing him. I guess it was appropriate that Peter now feels the same pain as Jesus, as Peter feels Jesus is denying his belief in him. But on those mistakes or errors in judgment or sins, Jesus pivots. Those sinful parts become the new mission. Peter, rather than protecting yourself, feed my lambs, lead my people, watch over them and protect them. You know how to do this, Peter, because you protect yourself so well. Now serve your community. Jesus takes Peter's characteristics and then gives him a new mission. The same thing happens with Paul. The very characteristics of zealousness, striving, speaking, which was used to persecute the church, was retooled for the new mission. Paul, with your connections and abilities to speak as a Roman to Romans, will take the gifts you offer and use them in a completely different way. Be it Paul, Peter, Jeff, Andrew, Lee, Bernie, Karen, Rick, you have gifts and talents and abilities and resources. Do they belong to you? Yes. But only you can answer if you've loaned them or given them to God to use. We as Lutherans recognize Philippians when we are in Christ, we are a new creature. Our talents, gifts, and abilities are the same, but our identity has a new organizing principle. It's your personal experience of the grace of God in your life which makes the difference. And grace so respects us that it waits for an invitation. Easter is the promise of resurrection, transformation, a new covenant, a new agreement in Jesus' blood. Do you need to let the agreement expand to more areas of your life? Well, we begin by inviting grace in. Let us pray. The prayer today will be in the form of a song. As I invite grace, I invite you to borrow my words and make your own invitation.
The gifts that you gave me when you called me from the darkness are the gifts that I give you. I have nothing else to give but the life that you gave me when you breathed your breath into me and the things you have provided that my body now may live but i cling to my pleasures like a drowning one to wreckage and i would not share my treasures with the ones who sink and die oh lord free my fingers from possessions that possess me and teach me how to share them and to trust you will provide the gifts that you gave me when you called me from the darkness are the gifts that i give you i have nothing else to give and I offer what you offer when you breathe your life into me and your gifts so freely given. Take them now that I may live. I may live. As you go on your way, may Christ go with you. May he go before you to show you the way. May he walk beside you to go with you, behind you to protect you, above you to watch over, within you to give you peace. As you go on your way, may Christ go with you. May he go before you to show you the way. May he walk beside you to go with you, behind you to protect you, above you to watch over, within you to give you peace. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.